Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice trigonometric equation. And I will show you a graph at the end. So let's get started. We have sine x to the third power plus cosine x to the fourth power equals 11 over 16. And we're going to find the x values, the angles, for which this is true. First of all, notice that cosine is raised to an even power. And this is also important. If you're integrating trigonometric functions with odd and even powers, I also made a video, by the way, a long time ago. You can also check that out. Anyways, we do use this strategy. So that strategy is basically we take one of them and turn it into the other. So in this case, since cosine x is raised to the fourth power, I can write it as follows. So let's go ahead and write this as cosine squared squared and then as you know the famous Pythagorean theorem gives us sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. This is a really nice and beautiful identity and this can be used in so many ways but here we can basically replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared. So of course we have to square that one more time. So this is going to replace cosine x to the fourth power in our equation, and sine cubed x is just going to stay the same. So for simplicity's sake, let's go ahead and set sine x equal to s. A lot of times with identities and equations, I do this. Set sine x equal to s and cosine x equal to c, and sometimes tangent to t uh, to make the writing easier on yourself. So from here we get sine cubed, which is s cubed, plus, remember cosine squared squared was replaced with this, so that's going to be 1 minus s squared squared. And that is equal to 11 over 16. Such a weird number, right? So let's go ahead and simplify this by expanding. We get 1 minus 2s squared plus s to the fourth power equals 11 over 16. And then let's multiply both sides by 16. And that's going to give us 11. And now we can put everything on the same side. And that's going to make this a quartic equation in S. And let's write this in standard form. Sixteen minus eleven is equal to positive five, and this is our quartic. You probably know, hopefully, that there is a quartic formula which is quite complicated. You you don't even want to see it. Uh, there's a cubic formula too, but quartic is much more complicated. But we can do the following, especially looking at sixteen uh, as the leading coefficient, and then looking at the other coefficients being sixteen and thirty-two. These are pretty much all multiples of 2, but not only that, 16 is a power of 2, which is 2 to the 4th power. In other words, I can write 16s to the 4th as 2s to the 4th power, and then 2s is going to become my new variable. You know what I'm talking about? I'm going to use substitution. So let's go ahead and write this as, can I write this as 2s to the 3rd? Yes, that's going to give me 8s cubed, so I'll need another 2. And then this one can be written as 2s squared, but that'll give me 4s squared, so I'll need an 8 to make it 32s squared, of course, with a minus sign. Plus 5 is constant, so it's good, and that's our equation. Now, at this point, I think it makes sense, right, to replace 2s with something. How about t? I mean, you can use any variable you want, obviously, but I'm going to use t. So this gives me 2 to the 4th power plus 2t cubed minus 8t squared plus 5 equals 0. What is one thing that I've been saying all the time in videos when we ever get a polynomial equation, a monic polynomial especially? Check the sum of the coefficients. 1 plus 2 minus 8 plus 5. Add the positives first. This is 8 minus 8 is 0. Yes. We got a solution. If the sum of the coefficients is 0, remember, if p of x is a polynomial, the sum of the coefficients is p of 1. This means 1 is a solution. So t equals 1 is a solution, which implies by factor theorem that t minus 1 is a factor. Awesome. That means we can factor this by using t minus 1 as a factor. 
and that just involves either long division, synthetic division, whatever, artificial division, whatever you do, or you can just manipulate the coefficients like this. This is something that I like to do. Kind of keeps me busy. T to the fourth minus T cubed. Notice that if you take out a T cubed, you get T minus one as a factor. So this is the right way to start. And then you just have to adjust. So I do have two T cubed, so I have to follow up with three T cubed, which should be followed by three T squared, which should be followed by minus five T squared because I have eight T squared here. And then of course that should be followed by a plus 5t and then of course we don't have a t and what we need to do here is uh, just finish up with let's see if I didn't make any mistakes uh, we got this and then minus 8t squared great so I kind of have to group these right so these two are going to be grouped yes that's fine and then of course finally I have to finish with minus 5t and then plus 5 there you go it works just for one split second, I thought it wouldn't work. I'm like, what? It's not going to work? Okay. Now we can take out a t cubed times t minus 1 plus 3t squared times t minus 1 minus 5t times t minus 1. I hope you see how this works. And so we can take out the t minus 1 and then get the other factor, which is t cubed plus 3t squared minus 5t minus 5 is equal to zero. Awesome. Now, what are we going to do with this, right? Well, here's the thing. We did get, we did get a cubic equation as a result, right? So what we need to do now is deal with this cubic, right? So let's see. Let me make sure I got the steps right. Okay, minus 3t cubed, minus 3t squared, plus 3t squared. Okay, I think we... Okay, there we go. We're good. Okay, awesome. So here's what we're going to do. We ended up with t equals 1 as a solution. We already knew that. But we also ended up with a cubic. Let me quickly talk about how you can solve that cubic because I'm not going to get into the details. But you can use the cubic formula, but you have to reduce it first. So start by replacing t with something like y minus 1. And then when you plug it in here, you're going to get rid of the radical term, y squared, and you'll end up with a depressed cubic. And then you can use the cubic formula, which we talked about a lot in other equations. But let's pick up from where we left off, t equals 1. Remember, t was 2s. So if t is 1, that means 2s is equal to 1, which means s is equal to 1 half. But s was sine of x. So if sine x is equal to 1 half, then from here we get two solutions between 0 and 2 pi. One of them is going to be pi over 6. The other one is going to be pi minus that, which is 5 pi over 6. And of course, if you get any good solutions from here, then you could also inverse sign them and get the solution. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and we'll finish up. So the graph of this function is kind of interesting because... It kind of curves differently than the sine function, but it still has that sine wavy look. And you can kind of, by graphing these two functions, you can find the solutions, some of which are special angles, such as pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.